and um, I will be paying people um, $50 each for the affiliates that they, or for the customers that they draw to this app. Hey guys, I'm Dwayne from the YouTube channel Uncle Dwayne's Watch List. It's a channel where I speak about investing in stocks and I've grown it to 28,000 subscribers in eight months. In any event, I am doing this video because I am looking for affiliates and I'm looking for affiliates because I have now created an app which I'm gonna take you inside of and let you see what it does and um, I will be paying people um, $50 each for the affiliates that they or for the customers that they draw to this app so the app is on the website stocksagesoftware.com and I will be showing you what the app does um, quickly. Firstly, we're looking at the home page here. But if we go over to the pricing menu, you'll see that the app is $129 a year. It's a yearly subscription. And for those who you get to sign up, you will be getting a $50 commission. That's not going to be a recurring commission. It's just one time. But you'll be getting a $50 commission for everybody you sign up. And having said that, let's look at how you can become the affiliate if you just go to the um, scroll down to the footer you'll see become an affiliate and for us to see what the app does I am going to click on Stock Sage where we get a look at what the app does so in the stock market when you're buying shares of a stock first off let's explain what that is when you're buying shares of a stock you're actually buying shares of a company. So, for example, our first stock right here is UPS, United Parcel Service. They carry the packages to your house. Well, UPS is a company. If you buy a share of UPS, you're buying a share of that company. And I'm going to click on UPS right here. Scroll down a little bit. And we'll see that a share of UPS right now is $135.65. So let's go back to our main screen of the app. And let's talk about what the app does. For some reason, our fifth column is shutting off, but that will be corrected soon. Let me get to the programmer and see why that's happening. But let's talk about what this app does. Every day that the stock market is opened, there are stocks that are at what they're called the 52-week low. What the 52-week low is, is all the stocks that are at their lowest price in 52 weeks or annually. Meaning, all the stocks that are at their lowest price in the last year. Every stock is going to go through this. It's going to be down to its lowest price in its last 52 weeks or its last year. I like to look for stocks when they're at their lowest price of the year and then buy them 
as they're starting to move up from that price. Because if you can catch them as they're starting to move up from their lowest price, then you're going to be making money all year. Now, imagine buying a great company, but you buy it when it's at its highest price of the year. What's it going to be doing? The price is going to be moving down all year. But if you catch it when it's at its lowest price of the year and it's moving up, then you can make money. And there's two things I look for. One, that the stock is at its lowest price of the year. And it's not just any stock. It's a fundamentally sound stock. So how do we know a stock is fundamentally sound? First of all, by its numbers, that it's making money. So there's a few things that we're going to look for. The first thing is that in the last five years, we want that stock to be making money every year. And one of the ways to tell that it's making money every year is by its having positive numbers every year. So this app looks at the last five years and it looks to see if these companies are making money at least three of those five years. If you look at UPS all four years, we can't see the fifth. Can view three of the four. Holly, well, I should say two of the four because 2019 is a zero. And this app pulls up ones that are at least three of the four. So 2023 is probably positive as well. Spartan Nash. So this app, the first thing it does is it pulls up every company that's making money at least three of the last five years. And that's all of these companies that you see here. Once it does that, now we want to narrow down and get more specific. So... First off, we want companies where on the balance sheet, the total assets are more than the total liabilities. This app does that by default. However, if we also want a balance sheet where the current assets are greater than the current liabilities, the app doesn't automatically do that. But if we go to this to this filter right here, current assets and liabilities, and we change from filter off to current assets greater than current liabilities. Now, it only brings up the companies where the current assets are greater than the current liabilities, which makes the list not much, but a little shorter. Another thing we can do, which is going to make the list dramatically shorter is we could say for profit margin on the income statement I want the net income that's coming from total sales and revenue to be 10% or greater once we choose that this list narrows down much smaller still quite a few companies but much smaller and notice now when i look at the companies it's easier for me to find a company where not only are not only is the last five years see we're seeing 23 now not only is the last five years all positive years, but we could see which ones have the last five years increasing because that's what we really want to see. 
we want to see their earnings per share increasing from one year to the next. For example, Cisco Systems, $2.63 in 2019, $2.20 in, um, $2 in 2020, $2.51 in 2021, it dropped a little, but back up again, $2.83 in 2022, and $3.08 in 2023. So we want to see those years increasing. And I can make this list even smaller. First, I could say, we want a company that's been buying back shares of its stock for the last five years, or barring one would be four of the last five, or barring two would be three of the last five. I'm going to say three of the last five. I'm not going to narrow it down that small. Now, we want to get it even smaller. We could change it. Profit margin, we could change it from greater than 10% to greater than 20%. And when we change it to greater than 20%, now we see it's only down to two companies. One is D-Local Limited, $0.05, cents, $0.10, cents, $0.26, cents, $0.37, cents, $0.49. Cents. So you know this is going to be a cheaper stock. And then Cisco Systems. Let's click on DLO, which will take us into D-Local Limited. So now once we've narrowed down to which company we want, we can click on the ticker symbol and it'll pull up the statistics for that company. It'll tell us what the company does. D Local Limited operates a payments platform in the United States, Europe, China, and internationally. Its payment platform enables merchants to get paid and to make payments online. The company serves commerce, streaming, ride sharing, financial services, advertising, software as a service, travel, e-learning, on-demand delivery, gaming, and crypto industries. D-Local Limited was found in 2016 and is headquartered in Montevideo, Uruguay. Yeah. So, at the top, it's going to tell us what the company does. And as we go down here, we see the earnings per share for the company. We see the earnings per share for the company again. Now, this time it's only showing us the three years, but we saw the four years before, but 2021, five years, but it's 26 cents, 37 cents, 49 cents. And what is the projected earnings per share in this current year? And the current year right now is 2024, 44 cents. So the year's not over again, over yet. So it may end up less than 44 cents. It may end up more than 44 cents, but so far it's 44 cents. It shows us the high and low prices for usually it's going to be the last five years. This time is three years. In 2021, the low price was $29.57. The high price was $73.43. But not only that, excuse me, not only that, it shows us the percentage increase that was. So that was an increase of 148.33% over 
over the course of a year if you bought this stock at its low price and sold it at its high price. What about 2022? Low price was $9.03. High price was $36.88. That was an increase of 308.42% over the course of the year. And lastly, we have 2023. The low price was $9.04, high price $24.22. That was an increase of 167.92% over the course of the year, right? So this stock has really grown for these last three years from its low price to its high price. A more expensive stock, you may find it growing 30, 40, 50 percent over the course of the year from its high from its low price to its high price. This is growing 148, 308, and 167 percent. Now what's the price of this stock? Right now, seven dollars and fifty-five cents. So, all of the statistics are here for this stock. There will be a full tutorial up on the website probably in a week or two. If you go to the footer again and you can click on the tutorial for it, it'll explain all of this stuff. But I'm just going through briefly now to show you guys what this can do. And if we go down to the income statement, we see sales and revenue, how much these companies made each year, 244 million, 120,000 in 2021, 418 million, 925,000, in 2022 and 650 million 351 thousand in 2023 and how much net income it had left over after paying off all expenses 77 million 876 thousand in 2021 108 million 683,000 in 2022 and 148,964,000 in 2023. And what percentage was that for those years in terms of profit margin? In 2021, it was a 31.9% profit margin. 2022 was a 25.94% profit margin. And 2023 is a 22.91% profit margin. And if you remember on the home page of the app, we put on the filter to find stocks that had profit margins above 20%. And you see all these profit margins were above 20%. Then we could see our return on equity which is pretty excellent. I would say a return on equity of around 10% or greater is decent. A 10% a return on equity of 20% or greater is, I would say pretty rad, pretty awesome, you know, and this one, return on equity 2021, 27.78%, 2022, 27.2%, 2023, 32.74%. So I really enjoy the return on equity. And we like companies where the debt to equity is under 200%. 
in 2021, their debt to equity was 170, 107.99%. 2022 was 106.77%. And 2023, it was 138.3%. So all three years, it was under 200%, which means we should see a pretty decent balance sheet, which we do. We have current liabilities less than current assets, which is one of the things that we filtered for on the homepage to the app, and total assets more than total liabilities, which we said the app looks for automatically. Then if we come to the bottom, to the cash flow statement, we see that this company bought back shares of stock for these three years. We don't know if it did it for all five years because this is only our front three years of information. But it did it for these three years. Now, one thing you have to check is sometimes these companies buy back shares of stock and sell more shares of stock in the same year. As investors, we like when they buy back shares of stock. We don't like when they sell more shares of stock. So we manually have to check and see if they bought back more shares than they actually sold. In this year, they sold more than they bought back as well as this year. But in this year, they didn't sell more shares, but they bought back shares. 97929000 worth. And if we come to the bottom of the app, there's things that the app wasn't able to fill out. It wasn't able to pull this information in, but we still provided boxes for you to fill it out yourself. And where do you find it? Well, you can go to most investing websites. One that I use a lot is yahoo.com. If we go to Yahoo, we can click on finance at the top and it will take us to Yahoo Finance. And if we put in the ticker symbol for this stock, which if we remember it was DLO, it will pull that information up for us. Right here under the summary tab. Well, actually, let's go to statistics first. If we go to statistics, and scroll down right here under share statistics we can find percent held by insiders percent held by institutions so insiders was 11.44 can come here 11.44 is how many people who work at or are involved with the company actually own shares. And 11.44 is a pretty large percentage. For many companies, that number is under one. So that means a large percentage of people who work at this company really have faith in this company. They believe in this company. And institutions is large banks and institutions. The amount of those who own the stock, 79.20%. Now, does this company 
pay a dividend. And it does not, so we're going to leave those empty. If it did, we would put in the dividend date and the ex-dividend date. Uh, dividend date is when they pay their dividend to their shareholders. And the ex-dividend date is the day that you have to own the stock by in order to be eligible for that dividend. So if the ex-dividend date is, let's say, November 16th, that means you would have to own the stocks by at least November 15th to be eligible for that dividend. If we go down to profile, it gives us information like who is the CEO and director of that company, which is Pedro Arndt, which you can put inside of this management section. You can also Google to find information about when they became the CEO. That may be helpful information because it will let you know if the same person's been running this company for all the years you analyze, or is that person just starting to take over? So how it's going to be run under them is still a little bit of a mystery. And competition... You can, um, competition, you can go here and find out this company is in the software infrastructure industry, technology sector, and if you want to go even deeper than that, maybe find out who's the head of that industry, you could try some Google searches to find out that information. But there's also one more very powerful thing that I'm gonna show you about this company that you can find on the summary section of Yahoo. If you scroll down here in the summary, scroll down and see where it says one year target estimate and there are different investing periodicals or websites that have this information. I just happen to use Yahoo. If you could scroll down, one year target estimate, it says $15.50. I can come here to the app, scroll up, and right here where it says projected, which is the current year, I can put $15.50 and hit enter. And when I do that, what is it going to do? It's going to let me know what percentage this stock is going to move up from its current price which is, well, actually, our current price is $7.55. But here it still has the old one. Let's see if we can change it. Yeah, its current price, $7.55 to the projected high price, $15.50. That would be an increase of 105.30% over the course of the year. However, when Yahoo does their estimates, I'm not sure if they're doing it very conservatively or if they are giving you what they honestly feel is the estimate of what it's going to move up to. But I'm going to show you a way that you can make an estimate yourself. The way I'm going to show you that you can make the estimate yourself 
is with PE ratio. So we're going to look at these three years low and high PEs, right? Low and high PE ratios. First one is we're leaving off the numbers after the decimal to make it simpler. 112 and 278, that's pretty high. We're going to look for the lowest of the three. 24 all the way up to 100, that will be 76. But if we come here, 18 to 49, so that would be the least of the three. So we're going to start with those. We're going to say 49 minus 18 equals 31. So we're going to say 31 plus our current PE plus 17.16 equals 48.16 which almost matches 2023 2023 was 49.43 and this one would be 48.16 and we're going to multiply that times our current earnings per share 0.44 equals 21.19 so Yahoo felt that this stock could go up to $15.50 in the next 12 months and that would be a increase of 105.3 but if we worked it out ourselves with our own estimate based on PE ratio, we could say this stock could possibly go up to 21.19, which would be an increase of 180.66%. Now, Yahoo's estimate is more conservative. i rather go with the conservative estimate so that it'll let me know, okay, don't overdo it. This is where that stock may move up to. But having said that, if we see the PE ratio move up from low to high this year, as much as it did last year, we could see a, a return of around 180%. In any event, that's a brief breakdown of the app. It helps you to find fundamentally sound stocks at their low price so that you can buy them and be profitable from them, actually make money in this stock game. But I need you guys' help selling this app, putting this app into the hands of people who want to make money in the stock market. And the commission is $50. So I look forward to hearing from you and have a great day.